在的草莓模型终于上线了。那这个草莓模型呢，其实它就是之前的 Q Star 这个模型。Q Star 模型呢，也也就是 Open AI 公司内部在发生宫斗那段时间，就是奥特曼先走了之后又回到了公司，然后最后以他们的首席科学家伊利亚离职来结尾的那件事。<笑>那伊利亚他走的时候呢，他就说 Open AI 公司内部正在训练一个非常危险的模型，它会威胁我们整个的人类。那这个威胁我们整个人类的模型呢，就是今天的欧旺了。那这个模型到底它会不会威胁到我们整个人类的生活呢？丽丽本期视频将用最通俗的语言给大家介绍欧旺这个模型到底是怎么一回事。看完本片后呢，欢迎大家在下面留言告诉我，你觉得这个模型。真的会威胁到我们的生活吗？还说是这是一个完全的炒作呢？好，马上开始。好，那我们先说这个名字欧旺，它为什么是欧旺呢？然后它为什么又是 Open AI 的欧旺，而不是 Chat GPT 的欧旺呢？那这个呢，其实就是因为他们的工作原理是完全不一样的。那之前的四欧的模型呢，它工作的时候呢，是把一整个的句子。拆成一小块一小块一小块来理解这个句子的意思，然后来给大家进行一个回答。那这个一小块到底有多小呢？那大家可以想象，最小我们把它想成一个单词，它是这样一个单词一个单词来理解你的这一句话的意思，然后来给大家进行一个回复。那它为什么要拆成一个一个的单词，而不拆成一个一个的字母呢？那是因为。OpenAI 为了加快它回复大家问题的时间，这样呢使大家的使用体验更加的好，也便于 OpenAI 去抢占一个市场，而不会发生说好像大家用了 OpenAI 之后都觉得 OpenAI 的反应巨慢没法用。那这次的 OpenAI O One 模型又是怎么回事呢？它就。是采用了跟之前的四欧的模型不一样的一个工作方式，它把它拆分的，它拆分到了字母，就是在它在理解我们句子的时候，它会把它拆分到一个一个的字母来理解整句话的意思，这样的话就便于 OpenAI 更准确的给出我们一个答案，那就不会发生之前有很多小伙伴在使用体验的时候提到，让他做一些专业一点的东西，更专注细节一点的东西，他就无法完成，回答的都是错误的答案的这种结果了，所以呢。它的这种训练模式跟之前的 ChatGPT 的四欧是完全不一样的，所以呢，这个是一个全新的一个算法模式，所以呢，他们就把它叫做欧万。那这个具体到底是怎样呢？我们马上看一个范例。So as you can see, the model、uh, fails on this. There are three R's, but the model says there are only two R's. 我们可以看到呢，在这个范例里面，我们问他一个草莓的这个单词里面有多少个 R。那四欧呢？他就无法回答正确，因为他不关注细节，他是把草莓这个单词当做一个整体来识别的，他不会关注里面到底是怎样的。我们再看欧旺的回答。And type in the same problem. This is an O1 preview, which is a reasoning model. So unlike the GPT-40, it starts thinking about this problem before outputting the answer. And now it outputs the answer. There are three R's in the word sorting. So that's the correct answer. 那欧旺这个模型呢，它就会关注到更细的一些东西，它会一个字母一个字母来给你比对，它就有正确的识别出来里面有三个 R。那看完上面的介绍，大家是不是已经对以前的四欧和现在的欧旺，他们两个的差别已经有了一个大概的了解了呢？四欧呢，它专注的更大一些，为了节省反应的时间；那欧旺呢，它专注的更细致一些。那欧旺具体可以应用在哪些方面呢？我们来看官方举的例子，比如说遗传学、经济学、量子物理学，然后各种复杂的逻辑推理，各种复杂的数学题，还有编程。那其实呢，大家就可以想象成，我们平常生活中认为的那种非常专业的，需要特别专业的人才能干的事儿，那在欧旺这个模型就对了。好，那我们接着看它欧旺的模型又分成了欧旺 Preview 和欧旺 Mini。那到底这两个的差别在哪儿呢？我们在使用的时候，到底应该选择哪一个呢？因为其实这两个的价格差别还蛮大的。Mini 的价格呢，大概是 Preview 的八折，也就是说，如果 Preview 是一块的话，那 Mini 的话只需要两角。那 preview 呢，其实就是我们刚才提到的欧旺拥有的所有功能，其实就是 preview 拥有的功能了。那它为什么还要加一个 preview 呢？嗯
。那是因为 OpenAI 呢，他们后面还会计划 O o n 这个模型增加更多的内容，所以这是一个抢先版而已。那 mini 呢，其实也非常的简单。这个模型呢，它就是把 preview 这个模型里面的编程这一块特别复杂的一个工作给专门的提取了出来。比如说，你想 bug 修复，或者是说写一段代码，或者是优化一段代码，就可以用 mini 这个模型。看完上面的所有的介绍，你是不是对 OpenAI 公司现在所有的模型已经完完全全的了解了 ？O One Preview 呢，就是负责非常专业的一些工作。如果你需要非常专业的工作，那就找 O One Preview。那如果你只需要程序这一块的话，那你只需要找 O One Mini 就够了。那如果你除了专业的工作以外的其他的一些工作，比如说让 OpenAI 画一个画，让 OpenAI。进行一些简单的对话，或者是怎样怎样的，只要不是专业的，那你就找四 O 就可以了。那刚才前面提到的 O One 在很多方面的一个具体应用的一个实例的视频呢，我也会放在视频的最后。感兴趣的小伙伴呢，可以直接跳到相应的时间点去观看。说了那么多，那到底谁可以使用 O One 的模型呢？那其实现在呢，所有的付费用户和 Team 用户都已经可以使用了。而且 ，OpenAI 也计划把 Mini 的模型免费的开放给没有付费的用户来使用，所以大家敬请期待哦。那还有一个小 Tips 呢，就是 O One 的模型呢，现在只能识别文本，它无法上传文件，也无法从网络上获取文件。看完上面的整个分享，你觉得有帮助你更好的认识这三个模型吗？当你在选择 OpenAI 的产品的时候。有帮助到你快速的决定用哪一个模型吗？如果你觉得有用的话，一定要记得点赞、关注、打开小铃铛，这样后面你就会看到更多丽丽分享的关于 AI 变现的实操技巧和最新资讯。同时，丽丽还准备了一个 AI 工具大合集，免费的分享给大家，里面收集了 AI 各个领域的 Top 软件的一个汇总。包括了每个 top 软件它的一个应用场景分析，它主要是用来干什么的，它的优缺点有什么，同时也对它的价格进行了一个比较分析，希望能帮助大家在最短的时间内对 AI 整个行业有一个全面的认识，帮助大家在选择 AI 软件的时候更加的得心应手。我会把链接放在留言栏，需要的小伙伴自己去取。那好，回到视频刚开始的那个问题，你觉得这个模型到底对我们人类是一个威胁呢，还是有帮助到我们的工作和生活呢？一定要在下面留言回复告诉我哦。那最后，感兴趣的小伙伴可以跳到对应的时间点去看自己感兴趣的应用点。So one of my favorite puzzles that I would do when I was a little kid is called a nonogram, where you're given an empty grid and then some numerical clues that tell you which squares in the grid you have to fill in. I thought we could have the model play a little game where it first generates a puzzle to solve, then we ask another instance of the model to try to solve the problem that it generated. So, yeah, I'll ask it generate, say, a five by five nonogram, where the final answer is the letter M. We'll see what it comes up with. All right, we see it just gave us a little puzzle. We'll go ahead and copy this, open up another window of O1, ask it solve the following puzzle, and let's say visualize the answer in some pretty way. Why not? This puzzle doesn't look like it's it's too hard, but the, the way that an onogram works is. For each row and each column, you're given a list of numbers, and the numbers tell you how many squares are filled in. And if the squares are consecutive, then you'll see like a two for two consecutive squares. If there's a space between them, you'll see a one comma one. And so you're supposed to just try to figure out which squares do I indeed have to fill in. And it looks like the model got this right. Illustrated a nice little letter M. But I think one of the things that is like nice about examples like this is it, it, it's similar to like. Sudoku or a crossword, for example, where you have to kind of make a guess and then see if that's a right guess or a wrong guess, and then backtrack if you get it wrong. And so, any type of task where you kind of have to search through a space where you have different pieces pointing in different directions, but there are mutual dependencies. So, 
you might get a, a bit of information that tells you that these two pieces contradict each other. Like a model like O1 is really good at trying to refine the search space here. The, fir the first of the problem uh, I would like to show is, is an interesting like common sense reasoning thing that all the previous type of, of large language models didn't do that great which is uh, about, about physics and about physical objects and, the, and their relationships. The problem, the problem reads, assuming the laws of physics on Earth, a small strawberry is put in a normal cup and a cup is placed up, upside down on a table. Someone then takes the cup and puts it inside the microwave. Where is the strawberry? And explain the reasoning behind it. It's, it's a simple problem, every human will know straight away what is the answer, but, but it's, it's something that language models are, are struggling a little bit and then we can, we can see how, this, how does this model do it. And we can also like a little bit have a glimpse on what is, what is happening in the, in, in, in the head of the model. And we also get a pretty, pretty nice answer of like, you know, what happened, why it happened in this particular scenario. The model needed to spend a little bit more time thinking about it and, and, and analyzing what did what, what it actually happen there. It couldn't. The, the, the model has a bit of a harder time thinking, especially about like scenarios involving physical objects, and then you, you need a little bit more time thinking for that. Yeah, let's maybe um, demo a game, right? Can we like implement like a small game uh, on HTML? What game do you like the most? Uh, let's go old school, Snake. Oh, nice. Snake is a brilliant choice. <laughs> um, okay, um, let's try it out, shall we? Let's um, implement the snake, which is HTML, JS, CSS. Maybe let's use uh, WASD to control the snake. Uh, let's hit uh, enter. All right. So, wow, the model gives us a really long implementation of the snake game. Uh, let's see how it goes. Can you describe to me what it's doing? Like... Um, so it basically thinks through like how we design the game, how to design the canvas, how to design the grid, and how to implement the different logic of this snake game. Uh, let's copy the copy the code and uh, let's do it in HTML and uh, let's see what's this snake game. Okay, we have a snake game. It says press spacebar to start or restart. Use WASD to control. Okay, we have um, this little green snake, and uh, it tries to eat this uh, red apple. I assume. <laughs> um, okay, let's make it more spicy. Let's make it harder. Yeah, let's make it harder. What are your What are the options in our in your mind? Can you put in some obstacles? Oh, that's a, that's a brilliant choice, right? The snake game should have some obstacles. Um, uh, do you have any design choice you want to make in the obstacles? Maybe make the obstacles the letters AI. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Tell this model to um, add some obstacles and um, they should form the letter AI. Right now the model is thinking and uh, it uh, returns us um, a new implementation that tries to further implement AI into uh, the grid. All right, and then after outputting the code, it also gives us some um, like a description of what are the changes or the enhancements. And uh, but let's see whether the code works. Right now, it actually looks like a giant AI on the screen, and uh, there are all the obstacles. So it's really cool, right? Very cool. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, it's a very exciting and smart model. And uh, as you see, that the model really tries to see or try to think about all the instructions I give to the model, and it tries to follow instructions, try and try to uh, track its own errors. It's impossible to be an expert in every single gene. There's 20,000 genes. Like, you can't keep everything straight, but AI can. 
My name is Katherine Brownstein. I'm a geneticist here at Boston Children's Hospital. I'm also scientific director of the Manton Center for Orphan Disease Research. I deal with the N of 1 cases where no one has seen that presentation before. The patients don't know what's going on. They're really medical refugees in some way. It's like wing walking, like you're seeing things and you're seeing genetic things, you're seeing phenotypic things and you're trying to connect them and none of it's been seen before, but like you think you are the only one in the world, but really sometimes there's a whole community, they just haven't come together yet. When before I would look up an article and then look up another article and then look up another article with reasoning is so much easier to use. It's just a quick prompt to summarize it for me and then summarize this part for me. I mean, it's just way, way faster. This is a case of excruciating pain in their bladder. We can't figure out why. So I can go here and say, can you tell me about citrate synthase. And it shows, it tells me that it is expressed in the bladder and it could potentially be related to bladder health. So the decreased citrate synthase activity, oh, this is really smart because I don't know from this variant if it's like knocking down activity or causing too much activity. It's actually really hard to figure that out sometimes. Um, and so it gives both options. So I can um, think about both ways that it could be going. That's actually really cool. I go down a lot of rabbit holes that do not yield anything useful. And being able to increase the percentage of rabbit hole to useful information is killer. There's a level of obsession that all of us have. I think we also have the cases that keep us up at night where, you know, we really can't figure out why we can't figure it out. No case is ever closed. I can kind of easily follow the reasoning I don't need to trust the result. I can just look, what did it do? Who are you? Oh, wow, who, who are you? Very big question. <laughs> I'm Mario Krenn. I'm a quantum physicist. So quantum physics is the study of the smallest particles. I want to understand how the world works. Here I would ask a question about the application of a certain quantum operator, which I know previous models like GPT-4 would very likely fail in this task. But here in contrast to answers from uh, GPT-4, this one gives me very detailed mathematics. This is correct, that makes sense. Here I think it tries to do something incredibly difficult. The really interesting thing is, how does the world work? But if you know how the world works, it helps you potentially to build new technologies. <laughs>